Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we find ourselves on a pirate ship sailing the seas for treasure. But not just any treasure, it's from the famous pirate Blackbeard himself, and he's summoned us to his deathbed to tell us the secret location of it. But he's told every renowned pirate on the seven seas as well, so the race is on, but we need a ship that's sturdy and fast. Now everyone seemed to have the same idea, so the battle has started in the harbor before the ships have even been completed. Sabredage is the French term for scuttling, which is purposefully sinking a ship to either avoid capture or because it was engaged in illegal activities. Now this is a two to five player game, takes 30 minutes, and is published by Renegade Game Studios. Today, I'll be doing a rule school where I'm gonna teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rule book yourself. Now I've placed its timestamps below me in the video description, which will help you jump to any section of the rules that you'd like. So without further ado, let's get going. Sabotage is a two to five player game where each of you will be your own captain of your ship and you're trying to have the longest ship at the end of the game. You'll be drafting different tiles with different abilities and programming where on your ship you want them to go. And after three successive builds, all chaos breaks loose, where each of the cannons are gonna fire in priority order, blowing up different portions of different ships, and ships will be shrinking because of that. And there's clever ways to defend from those cannons, like having armor, or having a pipe so it goes all the way through and hits somebody else. And if you're clever enough, you can have some treasure, and if it doesn't get destroyed or stolen, by the end of the game, you'll be able to add more tiles to your ship, making it longer, hoping to be the longest ship in the end. I'm going to show you how to set up and play the basic game for three to five players. Two player rules and expert rules will be at the end of this video. To first set up, you're going to assemble up the five different pirates, also known as captains. Now to do that, you'll find the different pirate figures as you see here. You'll also find these helm wheels and you'll fasten them to each of the pirates using these black fasteners that come. Each of them also get a stand that you'll put onto the captain, keeping in mind that some of the stands will need to be on the edge in order to let this spin freely. Once that's done, each player is going to select one of these pirates. Any of them not used can be placed back in the box. You'll then assemble the different explosion markers. And to do that, you'll find one with a notch on the top, one with a notch on the bottom, and you'll put those together just like this and they'll stand up and you'll make all of them and you'll put them off to the side for now. You'll also create a supply of fuse tokens. They have the number one on one side and the number two on the other. You can make one big pile off to the side where everyone can reach it. Next, you're going to assemble the deck of sail tiles. Now these tiles are double-sided. They all have a sail on one side and a different effect on the back side. First, what you're going to do is take any tiles that on the back side of them, see they all have sail on one side, and if they have any one of these three characters on anywhere on the tiles, you're going to remove them from the game. Those are only used in the expert. Now here I only have three tiles. There's many of these, but these are the three different characters you want to look at and remove all of those. And then you'll be left with a deck of sail tiles. Now I've split it up into two because I found it has easier to put one at each end of the table. So the people at each side of the table have a draw deck to draw from throughout the game. Next, each of the players are gonna grab the stern tile for their pirate. And that's corresponding to the color that's on this flag and has to do with the color of the pirate that you took at the beginning of the setup. Everyone's also gonna get a bow tile. These are all identical. You'll just take any one of these and you'll place it just on top of your stern for now. And you're gonna put these side by side. All the ships are gonna be like this. It doesn't matter which order they're in, but they're all going to be just like that. Then for each of these ships, you're going to place two of those sail tiles. We had just made that deck sail side up just like this. It doesn't matter what's on the back side. Don't even look at them. This is just extending your ship at this point. So everybody has a stern, a bow, and two sail tiles in between it. So here's what it might look like if you have four players, four different ships. The object of the game is to have the longest ship at the end of the game, because during the game you're going to be adding different sections to your ship, but people are going to be blowing up each other's sections and stealing things, and different things will be changing throughout the game. The game is played over three rounds, also known as Tides. Each of those tides will go through three different phases. You'll go through a resupply phase where you'll be adding uh, different decks to your hand to get ready to draft, and then you'll be adding them to your ship during the building phase, and then you'll be going to the boarding phase. 
So the first phase in a round or tied is the resupply phase. In this phase, each player is going to take four deck tiles that are in the stacks that we use during setup and just add them to their hand. When holding the deck tiles, you want to hold them sort of like cards, with the sales side facing the opponents and you looking at the back side secretly so you can see what these actually do and the opponents cannot. Now we're going to go to the building phase. We're actually going to do three successive building phases, but in each of these three successive building phases, we're going to select one deck tile from the ones that are in your hand and you're first going to place it face down just behind your ship. And so what I mean by that is you're going to place it just below your ship. Let's say we're the green player and you always place them sail side up so that other players can't see what this is. Now, very important, when you place it, you need to make sure you place it with the right orientation. We'll talk about what these do later, but this cannon is facing this way. If I wanted it to face this way, I would put it like this. But in this case, let's face it to the left. So when you place it, you want to place it sail side down, but knowing the orientation, because when this gets flipped, it's going to go like this. So we've placed it like that. And then on our corresponding captain, this is the green captain, we would select the helm. So we're gonna set this at a specific number between one and nine, depending on where in the ship we want this to go. But let's say we want this to be in the second spot in our ship. So we secretly set this to two where no one else can see it. Once all players have set their deck tile, sail side up below their ship and have secretly selected which values on their helm, then everyone will simultaneously reveal their tiles. Now, in this case, I'm gonna show you just one of them at first, just to show you how this works. We are the green player right now. Let's just go ahead and do ours just to show you how this works. Now to flip the tile, remember you always do it this way, never this other way, because that changes the orientation of the tile. So it's always flipping this way, keeping the orientation the same. And then we're gonna move this in a specific spot. Now this shows you the rank of where it's gonna be in the ship. Now this is the first rank and this is the second rank, because if you look, these are separated tiles. And I'm gonna put this in two. So this is the first one and it's going to be the second one. So this is going to go just like this. So you can see in the first round, your only choices are to put it first, second, or third in the first successive build phase of the game. Then you'll place your captain on that number just to keep everything straight. Now that they've all been placed, this is where we're at. Each of them has placed one and they've placed their captain on the helm of the new tile corresponding with the rank on their ships. Next, any place that these captains are, you're going to add a fuse token if there is one. For example, this one has two different fuse tokens that are ones, so we'll place them on it just like this, where this next ship doesn't have any fuse tokens. This one has a two, and this one over here has a two. We'll go over what these do later. Now that's the end of the first successive build phase. Remember, you're doing three of these in each round known as tides. So at the end of this building phase, you're gonna do two things. Number one is you're gonna take your captains back because you're gonna get ready to select another number. Next, you're gonna select the three tiles that you did not use. You're gonna take those tiles and pass them to the player to your left, which means you're gonna get three from the player to your right. From those, you're gonna select one tile to use and place them on your ship as talked about previously. Then you'll have those two tiles, you'll pass them around, you'll get two from the other player, and from these two you're going to select one to play as normal, and the other one you will discard out for now into a discard pile. After the three successive building phases, you're going to go to the boarding phase where we're going to fire cannons, collect treasures, and then board. Now the first thing in this phase is firing the cannons, so let's talk about that. All the cannons that have a one priority fuse on them are going to all fire simultaneously. So you, let's show you how this works. So we'll start here. This one looks like it's firing out into the ocean, but the game board's actually round. So this one wraps around and hits this one. So this one will come here and hit this with an explosion token. You place that on there and you remove the priority token to let you know that you've already uh, shot that cannon. Now this one actually is gonna do the opposite. It's gonna come around and hit this player like this and this priority token gets taken off just like that. This one is gonna fire here, and this one is going to fire here. This one is going to fire over to here. These two are going to fire here and here. This one is going to fire over here, and this one is going to fire here, and this one already has an explosion token. This one already has an explosion token. 
Once that's done, you're going to remove all of the tiles that have explosion tokens on it and realign the ships, making sure that the bottom always stays at the bottom and never moves. You'll be moving these down like this. So for example, let's just show you this ship. Uh, this one is getting exploded. So is this one and this one and this one. And so this collapses down, always bring the top down to the bottom just like that. And let me do the other ones for you. So now we have the altered ships and now all that's left are the ones with the priority two tokens and you would do the same thing for those. But let's show you some of these examples because I want to start talking about some of the other aspects of the game. So first of all, this is a priority two. Now this is your bow. Now this can never be destroyed by anything in the game regardless of any of the other rules I mentioned. This can never be destroyed. So this just doesn't get hit. Nothing happens and this priority token comes off. Now this is a long cannon. A long cannon will shoot and continue to shoot all the way through and sometimes wrap around until it hits armor, which we'll go over a little bit later. So this one here will shoot and it hits this one. Now, this is known as a pipe. If something was gonna go through here, it kind of goes through the pipe, doesn't hit this and it keeps going. So in this case, this one goes through here. There's no armor. So it goes through here and comes around and hits this one as well. Now this one also uh, hits the number two, goes over here, goes through the pipe, and hits this one as well, but already has one of those on it. So both of those have fired. This is a short cannon, acts like normal. It just happens to hit this one next to it. This is a bombard. This one shoots over one ship to the next one. It cannot be defended with anything. This will always hit. So this hits just like this, and this is reduced, and now we'll reduce the ships one more time. And this is what it looks like after, and poor little red ship is basically back to where they started. Now, normally you'd go to the next part of the boarding phase, which is collecting treasures, but I want to pause a moment and go over some of the other things that can happen while you're firing cannons and some of the different ones. Now, this is a spring. Now, let's just say this cannon was firing this way. It would hit the spring and come back and it would explode itself and it would itself get an explosion token and this would get removed. However, springs cannot spring back long cannons because they're really powerful. So this long cannon still explodes through here, through here, and to the other side as I showed previously. So this would have gotten an explosion token, and this would have gotten removed. Now the double cannons work a little differently. There actually was one of these out in the previous example, but I didn't go into exactly how it works because I didn't want to stop and teach you something you didn't yet know. But these double cannons, of course, they would go with priority one and then priority two shoot like normal short cannons. Now, if this is still uh, standing, if this tile is still here at the end of that specific round, then instead of removing these, these actually just swap. That's what these arrows are for. And so that next round, this one's gonna go first, and then this one's gonna go second. And that's obviously assuming that this tile is still here. So when you shoot with these, you don't take them off and remove them as I showed previously. Uh, you just flip them like that. Now here we have armor, and this blocks all cannon shots coming from the side. So both the short cannons and the long ones that usually blow through everything, these long cannons uh, will get stopped by the armor. The only thing that does not start, uh, get stopped by the armor are those bombards that we showed you earlier that shoot over one and hit just like that. And so this long cannon would shoot through here. This would get an explosion marker and then it would stop and get hit by this armor. But if there was a bombard here, when it shot, it would go over one and destroy this because it's not being hit by the side by the armor. Speaking of different tiles, there's a tile I haven't yet shown you. When you select your tile and you place it uh, near your ship and you secretly select where it's going, once everyone has revealed, if it happens to be this tile, which is a rotten tile, what this means is that you can basically, after everyone has shown you where they've placed their uh, tiles and where they've gone, you then can put this anywhere on your ship, regardless of what you selected on your captain. Now, if more than one player selected this, then at that point, after everyone has placed all their tiles, the people that have played the rotten tiles will then secretly select it on their helm as normal, and then they'll place it wherever that says. But if they're the only one, they can place it anywhere after everyone else has placed. Now this tile inherently does nothing, but you might want it to take a hit instead of some of your better tiles. Now during the boarding phase, after the cannons have fired, we go to collect treasure. Now this is a treasure tile, we haven't talked about them yet. They get placed just like normal treasure tiles. Now at this point of the round, if this uh, treasure tile is still there, meaning it hasn't been exploded, uh, you're going to add a tile to the bottom of it. You're gonna take one of the deck tiles, either from the top of the deck or one of the ones that's been discarded, put it sail side up without looking at it underneath this treasure tile. This is gonna start stacking up. Well, what does this do for you? Well, if this is still here at the end of the game, all the tiles underneath are gonna be able to be added to your ship. And remember, you're trying to have the longest ship, so the more treasure you have here, the better it is. After everyone collects treasure, we go to board. 
any uh, ship that has a boarding plank tile that looks like this. We have not shown these in detail yet. They get to steal a tile that that boarding plank is next to. And you place this tile on top of the boarding plank. So this one would, could steal this and place it just like this. And then this would sort of shrink down just like that. Now, if the boarding plank is next to a treasure, they're going to take the treasure and all the tiles underneath it and place it just on top like that. However, if there's ever a tile that has more than one boarding plank trying to steal, then it does not get stolen. And also with stacks of tiles, if anybody were to hit it with a cannon, all of the tiles get removed from that spot. And that would have been the end of the round. You'd start the second of three rounds known as tides. You'd be res resupplying like normal. But when you do go through the building phases in this second round, you'll be passing these tiles to the player to your right. And at the end of the second round, when you go to the third and final round, you'll be passing those tiles back to the left like in the first round. At the end of the game, you're going to remove any and all rotten tiles from all the ships. Then, any ships that have treasure tiles, they'll take all the stacked tiles underneath it and they'll increase their ship with those tiles. Then the ship that is the longest will win. If it's tied, the one that has the most cannons on it will win. And if it's still tied, then you share the victory. To play with the expert rules, you'll take all the tiles that have these three different sailors on there. There'll be a lot more than what you see here, but these are the three different sailors. You'll add all those tiles to the stack at the beginning of the setup. Now this is a carpenter. The first one you have in your ship does nothing, but if you add a second one, you'll end up drawing the top tile from the deck and placing it on top of that. And if there was a uh, priority token on it for a fuse, you would take that off and it goes like this. This is the gunner. Anytime you add another gunner, you will make sure that you add the fuse tokens to any of your other gunners that are on your ship as well. This is the saboteur. If you're the only player to play a saboteur, then all players, regardless of who they are and regardless of where they are on their ship, would lose all the saboteurs that were already there. Now, if more than one player plays a saboteur on the same time, then nothing happens. They just get added as normal. When playing with two players, there'll be a total of four ships used. Now, each player is going to use two of these ships, but in left to right, they must alternate between players. For example, the first player would be purple and green, and the second player would be yellow and red. In the resupply phase, you're going to take seven tiles off the top into your hand instead of four. And in the building phase, when you're selecting those tiles, you're going to select two tiles instead of just one before you pass those tiles. And you're going to put one in front of each of your ships, setting the respective captain to the helm rank that you'd like. Also keep in mind that the bombards, since they go over and hit and things wrap, these will always end up hitting your other ship throughout the game. And the rest of the game is played as normal. Whoever has the single longest ship is the winner. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into sabotage and get to the fun quicker than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I've placed the link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to put them because not only will I be notified, but so will Renegade Game Studios.